Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime Pack here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a next-gen Steam machine that I recently put together. Now you might notice that the operating system I'm running here looks just like the operating system on the Steam Deck, and that's because it's actually the same operating system. This is Steam OS 3, I'm using Hollow ISO, and it really does offer a nice console experience. And speaking of console, I wanted to keep this build as small as possible, so I actually went with a MSI Trident that I picked up uh, about two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And with what I've done to this unit here, I can actually run some of this stuff at 1440p with SteamOS 3. It's actually a really nice experience, and I've still got access to the desktop, and I'll show you that all in a second. But first, I wanted to give you a look at this PC. So I actually picked this up on eBay, it was refurbished, it was actually a pretty decent deal. Like I mentioned, I got it about a year and a half ago. It's an MSI Trident 3 with the 10th gen Intel CPU. And originally, this came with an NVIDIA GTX 1650, I believe it was the 1650 Super. And it performs really well with Windows, but I wanted more of a console experience, and since we can install SteamOS 3 on these devices, I figured I'd go ahead and do it. So yeah, it's actually pretty easy to access everything. Now the very first time I wanted to change the SSD in this unit, it did take a little while to get down to it. Basically the whole bottom of the case slides off, but we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 10th gen i5 CPU, and I've added this Radeon RX 584 gigabyte model. It's an OEM variant, and originally it came with this, which is a GTX 1650. But yeah, I really love the small form factor of this unit, and you can add a 2.5 inch drive and a single M.2 SSD to this thing. And when it comes to the overall specs, we've got that Intel i5-10400F, 6 cores, 12 threads, it's got a base clock of 2.9 and a turbo up to 4.3, but this will turbo on all cores up to 4 GHz, and most of the time that's what it's sitting at in Linux. 16 GB of DDR4 running at 2666, a Radeon RX 584 GB model, this does have Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 built in, and right out of the box it did have an Intel card, so it works in SteamOS 3 perfectly. But yeah, with that i5 and that RX 580, this has been performing really well. We still have access to all of the on-screen controls that we can use with the Steam Deck. And real quick, I'll just go into the settings here and show you exactly what this thing's running. So if we go to System, we can scroll down. And for some reason, this card does show up as an RX 480 in Linux, no matter what I've done with it. But this is for sure an RX 580. It's an OEM variant from an HP. So yeah, nothing super special here. And of course, I could have just kept Windows on this, but I really love this interface here. It does make it much easier just to navigate with the controller. And this is going to be great for the living room. It's small form factor. We've got an easily accessible operating system that we can navigate with the controller. We can access all of those Steam Deck quick menu items, and we do have system-wide FSR. With this RX 580, it does come in handy when you're trying to go up to, like, say, Ultra at 1440p with a few of these games. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a 1080p card, but there is a lot of this stuff that I was able to run at 1440p here at 60fps. And another cool thing we have is the desktop. So, it's the same operating system that's running on the Steam Deck, we have access to a full desktop operating system along with the kind of Steam Deck UI interface for Steam. And when it comes to emulation, you could install EMU Deck, you could install Emulation Station, it's really up to you. Personally, I've just been running everything standalone right now, and we will take a look at some PS2 and PS3 emulation by the end of this video. But yeah, I mean, it's been functioning really well with this setup, and everything just works, and it really comes down to having that Radeon card. So the RX 580 just worked right out of the box. Now Hollow ISO does have support for NVIDIA and Intel GPUs, but I've not had good luck with it, so I wanted to stick with Radeon. And the 580 I have here was the smallest, most powerful Radeon card that would fit inside of this unit. And uh, with the new Steam Deck updates, we can actually change the resolution really easily. So from the menu here, we're going to go to Properties on each game. It is a bit cumbersome, but it doesn't take much. We can set the resolution to 1080 or 1440 in this case. This is one of those games that does run at 1440 at high settings on this setup. But yeah, it's easy enough to put something like this together. I've done an install tutorial using Hollow ISO. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But now I want to show off a little bit of gameplay here. So this is Injustice 2. We're at high settings, 1440p. Looking really good here. I don't have FSR on right now, it's at a true 1440p, and I was actually really impressed that the RX 580, especially a 4GB version, could run this game at a steady 60fps with these settings. What I'm going to do now is just plug this into my game capture device so we can get a better look at everything, and we'll test out a few more games. 
And first up, we've got The Witcher 3 at 1080p Ultra settings, and I forget how good this game really looks at Ultra. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. And like I mentioned, we do have system-wide FSR. I do want to show that off real quick. But uh, the first thing I need to do is lower the resolution. So we're at 1080p Ultra right now. And by the way, I do have Hairworks all. We'll go to Graphics. And Hairworks is completely off. Something that really kills these Radeon GPUs. But we'll lower this to 1600 by 900. And it was running well at 1080, so it's going to run even better at 1600 by 900. But I wanted to show FSR. So we'll go over here to the Settings. Scaling Filter. FSR. I've got the FSR sharpness set to 5. And now at 1600 by 900 ultra settings, we can get close to 100 FPS with this game. So we really don't need it, and I would just go ahead and lock this at 60 FPS, but it's there if you've got a lower end GPU. Next up, we've got Project Cars 2. I've got a mix of high and ultra settings here. We're at 1080p, and I know it's an older one, but this is still one of my favorite racing games. And when it's set up correctly, it looks really, really good, even at 1080p. And we can average around 96 FPS with this game, so we really don't need any FSR. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, and I'm always really impressed by how well this runs in Linux. I've just had really good luck with it. 1080p, high settings, and I've got FSR from the game settings at quality. And I do get a few dips here under 60, so we can always go into the settings and change that FSR to balanced. Still looks pretty good. And with it set up like this, we can get an average of 72 FPS out of it. So yeah, this is another one that will work really well in a setup like this in the living room. Not bad at all. Here's Elden Ring, and I was really hoping to get a little better performance out of this. But we're at 900p, I've got the system-wide FSR turned on, and we're at medium settings. We're still dipping under 60, so I might need to turn some of those settings from medium to low. But I mean, it's definitely playable like this, and at low settings 1080, you can get an average of around 55 FPS. And the final PC game I wanted to test here was Doom Eternal. Unfortunately, I forgot to turn on my game capture sound, so I didn't capture it. But uh, we're at high settings, 1080p, and we can get well over 60 with it. Looks great like this, and I was really hoping we could do Ultra at 1080, but unfortunately with that RX 580, it's just not going to be possible. And of course, this thing's going to handle emulation very well. Now, you could always go through and install EMU Deck to set everything up for you, but I find that, you know, all of my controller configurations and everything aren't the way I like, so I still really have to go through each of these emulators and redo all of the controller mapping. So at least for right now, I've just been launching these individual emulators through the Steam Deck UI, so you can add them as a non-Steam game, and that's how I've been playing them. And right now, we've got GameCube at 1440p. We could even go up to 4K, but my monitor is limited to 1440p, so there's really no point. And it'll even handle PS3 emulation. Here we have Tekken 6, 1080p with RPCS3, using the Vulcan back in here, and that RX 580 could probably upscale this game a little more. But overall, it's kind of an all-around little gaming machine. I mean, we can do some awesome emulation on it, some great 1080p gaming. Some of the games can be run at 1440p. It's not a top-of-the-line machine by any means, but I wasn't going for that. I wanted a small form factor unit that I can install SteamOS on, and I think something like this would be perfect. Initially, I was going to go with a much larger machine, but then I remembered that I had this laying around, and I found a card that would fit in it. So with that GTX 1650, I just really can't get GameScope working properly with Hollow ISO, at least at the time of making this video. But down the road, I'm sure drivers will be updated, and hopefully Valve puts this out for everybody to use on basically any PC. And by then, we should have really good support for NVIDIA cards. But if you're looking to do this right now, I would highly suggest using a Radeon card, be it from the 4000 series up to the 6000 series. I've had pretty good luck right there in the mid-range. And as you saw with this video, the RX 580, which is readily available on eBay, works really well at 1080p, and with some of this stuff, we can go up to 1440 with it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave a few links in the description. And if you want to install Hollow ISO on any of your devices right now, 
Link to the tutorial video I created is also in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.